All right, what is going on, everyone, and welcome back to another Global Labs patch notes reading for August 16, which was yesterday. So these notes are on the official Global Labs. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read it, and I'll try to translate it from Korean. So this is just Google translated. I'll try to make it make sense. And there's actually a lot of stuff that I want to talk about because, one, there are Dark Knight changes. That's my main, and... You know, Dark Knight changes are very rare, so I'm pretty excited for that, plus a lot of other grind spot changes. So I kind of skimmed the notes. I didn't really read it fully, so that's what we're going to be doing. And I'll give you my thoughts and opinions of it. So once again, this is the Black Desert Lab. We'll be informing you of the update for August 16 and what's going to happen in the future. So usually when Global Labs comes out with patch notes it usually hits the live servers in like a week or two so these are what to expect and i think it's usually interesting to watch all right so admittedly i don't really know what the other classes improvements are but it just like brief looks at it is wind riding i don't know the official names of the skills from other classes but we'll see if the character is still in the air, the wind ride skill will now activate once more. So if you air attack, you do it again. That's cool. Wizard. Fix the issue where super armor effect would be applied while moving. Uh, when the mo magic evasion is still backwards during the cooldown. Apl super armor would be applied after moving. Oh, I think they want it to be while you're stationary, not while you're moving. So that's, I think, is that bad? Yeah, that sounds like it's bad, but I'm not sure. Because it's like, um, when you're using the effect, you have super armor around you. But then when you move, it still lingers. I'm not sure. Um, admittedly, I just don't know Ninja. Like, I don't know anything about it. King of the Dead. I think, okay, so there's River and there's another thing. So I'm not sure, uh, like, what is Succession and Awakening. I'm just going to skip this. All right, let's talk about Dark Knights. River. Permitting Darkness. I think that's probably Shattering. All defense reduction effects on successful hits from the Seeping Darkness skill have been removed and an effect of plus 10 at... AP has been added during the skill. That's pretty good. More AP for Dark Knights. They actually can do damage now. That's cool. Scratching Madness. Wait, didn't... Okay, so they have this skill called for meeting Darkness, and then they call it Seeping Darkness on here. Who? This is Google Translated. What in the world? All right. And neither of those two skills are right in English to the NAEU version. All right, Scratching Madness, Inheritance, when the damage from... <laughs> that's not even the English name, but okay, it's, it's not a big deal. Is applied to damage from the second and third hit of the strong this ability has been changed to be applied to the first hit instead of ongoing. Uh, I think that's good, simply because uh, you know how a few months ago they tried to make a change where all the skills would do like a number times 10 hits, right? So they're trying to reduce the amount of hits um, that land on people and just make the number bigger, but less hits. I thought that was a good change. So I think they're just uh, changing that one as well. And admittedly, I don't even know what this skill is called. <laughs> um, Wheel of Fortune. We know that one. Big circle. All right. So hit damage. Like five to 8,000, depending on the level. Now it's slightly higher. Um, so I guess this is a PVE change and the PVP reduction rate. And in theory, it should feel the same in PVP. Um, but this is a PVE change because numbers are big. Um, what do I think of that? Uh, just more damage, clear faster. That's fantastic. Land of Badir. I think this is Legacy of Badir. Uh, cooldown change from 30 to 10 seconds. Okay, so there's only a few skills that have really long uh, cooldown timers, and I think that is probably um, 
the Rabom one, so the skill enhanced one where it's like the shift X or Z, whatever it is. So when the hit is successful, the health and like MP, I actually didn't even know what MP stood for. Everyone just calls it mana or whatever, because that's just standard. Um, recovery effect has been changed from 25 to 200 slash 100 respectively. I think that's good. I mean, I've never really had an issue with, um, MP as in a skill. Cause you know, I think most people have infinite potions these days, or even if you don't have it, you have the highest tier pot and it's not really an issue. When they made the changes for HP recovery on hit, that was a nice one. But MP, I never really had issues with it. All right, so the damage has been changed as followed. Um, 2368 times 4 to 3000 times 4. Cool. I mean, it's not something that's going to be used a lot because 10 second cooldown is still pretty high. I mean, from 30 to 10 is actually pretty huge. Like, whatever skill... You use on a 30 second cooldown must be huge. All right, the knife of destiny. I think that is your F button, the one that just like pokes stabs. That one just makes sense. The cooldown has been changed from 18 to 10 seconds. Okay, this is not that skill, <laughs> but that's good. And one hit, two hit damage is. So the one hit damage is doubled. The two hit damage is like 20% more. So I, I mean, that's pretty good. From a 10 second cooldown is insane. Um, PVP, uh, in theory, I think for PVP, it should feel the same. Dark Star Cloud. What is that skill? I don't know what it's called in the English version, but that sounds really cool. And if it was the English version, I would be okay with that. Uh, when using the Dark Star Cloud skill, an effect of plus 12 AP for 10 seconds has been added. Is that good? I mean, obviously, more AP is good. I guess that the only thing that'll affect is how I adjust my add-ons and the skill add-ons. Uh, simply because right now, people put like more damage on certain skills. So if we can replace that with, you know attack speed or something that's always a good thing so yeah i think that's good taoist uh this is this is dosa so we all know dosa is getting an awakening soon tm they've been teasing it on their official social media and everything uh korea has gotten to see it every right now so yeah i'm excited for that i don't really know too much about dosa we played it for seasons uh, when it came out, and then that was about it. I don't really see many doses like PvPing much. And again, I haven't really been doing much PvPing in general lately, but I'm excited. Whenever Awakening uh, Dosa comes out, we're going to be obviously unlocking it, and then we'll be trying everything out. So expect that on day one. Whenever it happens, I don't know. Uh, I wish I knew what any of these skills did, and uh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so. Content. The following quests can be completed in our red battlefield have been improved so they can be completed with the Black Spirit. Quality of life change. Very good. Basic. Okay, so they're changing rewards now. So before the change, you would get Spirit Potions, which are the ones that just give like HP and stuff. And then Giant's Elixirs. They should give you... They should have changed it to Frenzies. Whale tendies and spirit powders. The spirit powders are actually pretty nice, actually. I'll be honest. Um, one immortal oil. These are actually kind of worth a lot, just because to turning it into uh, PvP, like elixirs or frenzies, whatever you want to do. Those are pretty nice, actually. Uh, five. So I think these are green whale tendons, and then the excellence are blue. Either blue or whatever higher it is. And then five healthy juices. Um... I don't really like this five healthy juices changes, to be honest. I'd rather have the spirit powder because this is something that can actually be turned into like capris and turned into money. Um, this one, dude, I, I'm pretty sure anyone that's already PVPing already has like their health, breath, and strength 
at like a level that's above what it could be. So I would rather have them give us more silver rewards or maybe like more elixirs, potions instead. I'm not sure if this is a good one, but uh, it's whatever. Uh, this is why RBF is declining because they decide that people should get less money in silver per RBF, which is dumb. And it wasn't even that much in the beginning. Um, so before you would get more healthy juices and everything, now you can get a Perfume of Courage. This is actually very huge. These are 30 mil each. That's a lot. Um, Calk Elixirs, eh, less valuable. I think the Perfume of Courage is probably the best one to get uh, just because it's used more for PvE as well. And Calk Elixirs are defensive, so uh, just don't get hit. And then Perfume of Enhanced Enchantment, I think, is the green one. So, uh, realistically, the Perfume of Courage is the best one to get. The amount of combat experience when winning or losing the Red Battlefield has been increased. So, for most people, this is not going to be a big deal. But you know how, if you're trying to push for level 67 and up, uh, RBF and... AFK training dummies are the way to do it, and grinding is not the way to go. It's dumb. It is the way it is. But, like, if you're just, like, a new player or not even at level 66 yet, irrelevant to you. But um, anyone pushing past 66 is... This is important. All right. So, um... This doesn't even affect 66 and up. <laughs> I... I'm going to be honest, you probably shouldn't be even PvPing under 60. Let's be real. Like, I wish it wasn't like that. But the hard truth is, what RBF is not gear capped, and the people you're fighting against are like 750 plus gear score. And so if you're going under level 60, even if you have all the best gear, like you're like 750 gear score, just by being under level 60, you still are missing a lot of passives and like all the extra skills at max level and everything so like the hard truth is it's not worth going in rbf under 60 and then even then you should probably be at like 62 before entering um not that you can't it's just if you're willing to sacrifice stats going in it's fine but like i realistically like it's a good change obviously but it just feels like it's so irrelevant. I don't understand, but whatever. Um, anything else above here, like 62 to 64, if all you do is RBF all day, that's cool. That doesn't, like, this number does not look nice at all, but, I mean, you get more than you did before. Okay, so this one, monsters. So we all know what Dekia grind spots are. The lantern, you, you buff the old enemies to be... Uh, stronger and they're adding new spots as well and then they're buffing some other spots that already have Dekia which is kind of weird but let's read through it. The Dekia Lanterns hunting grounds are being prepared uh, of the three Dekia Lantern spots. Um, Ash, Olin's um, hunting grounds. The Ash, Forest, Olin's excluding the Crescent Moon Shrine are the hunting grounds that many adventurers look forward to um, for that. Okay, so let me break this down for all of you. Ash Forest right now uh, is, at least on the NA server, highest silver an hour. But that is a very sweaty spot. You are not chill grinding there. And then Olin's Valley. I think people grind Olin's for the Deborekas and, of course, the Rich Merchant Ring piece. I don't think people grind Dekia Olin's for silver. Um, like, I think people are straight up. There are two items you want there. Once you get those items, you're out of Olin's doing something else. So when they say people are excited to be grinding there, or looking forward to it, nah, no, I don't think so. Like if you're looking for um, the rich merchant ring piece from Olin's, I do believe the regular Olin's is better. Like just clear speed wise, you clear more in general. So by the laws of average, you should be able to get it faster. Um, we don't know the drop rates of Dekia versus normal, but if I were to take a wild guess, I think regular is better. Um, okay, so they're basically adding a Crescent Moon or Crescent Shrine and something else. So the two new spots are 
Dekia Crescent Shrine. Oh, so there's only one? Okay, so yeah, Dekia Crescents. Before I read into it, here are my thoughts. Crescent Shrine is out in the middle of the desert already, which is kind of annoying just to do. It's because when you, you like two seconds into the desert, you immediately get hit by a debuff of hypothermia or sunstroke or heat stroke, whatever. And then you're just like, oh, I gotta get the. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of annoying. And like, okay, so the current Dekia Valencia spots we have right now, like Histria, Achman, uh, Sulfur, Pilaku, at least you can go to Valencia and then those spots are like two seconds away. Like you just ride there and you get there in like 30 seconds. Crescent, you have to go to Sand Grain, which is annoying, and then you have to ride all the way there to the point where it's like a five-minute trip just to get there. And then we don't even know if it's good, so that's kind of annoying itself. But anyway, let's read it. Uh, rumors began to circulate in the Sand Grain where Crescent was offered a blah, 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 flavor text. What we need to know. Dekia Crescent Shrine. Recommended AP 300, 400 DP uh, for most Dekia spots and things with over 300. More is better. And they should put 401 because of the bracket. So 401 minimum. More is better. Main loot is Debereka Ring. Thank God they have more spots for Debereka Rings. Because, uh, yeah, I, I was getting burnt out of grinding Tungrad ruins. <laughs> and just, like, the other spots in general. I just, like, doing the Arethia's Limbo or whatever it's called, the Witch's Token thingy nowadays, it's kind of a pain. That is, like, this straight RNG drop. I wish I could just get a consistent one every, like, two hours or something. Instead of hoping for the uh, token instead. So Forgotten Sign, I assume, is the same thing. But now you can just straight drop a ring, which is fantastic. Um, Ash Forest, Dekia Lantern. So my understanding of this is if you can already do Dekia Ash, this is like a buffed version of that, which of all the spots, there's so many spots in the game you could buff, but you're just like buffing the hardest one already. So I'm like, this one isn't even a chill spot. <laughs> well, then again, my experience of it is as a glass cannon dark knight, so it was not chill. You can watch my video of it, too. Uh, when you shine the light of the second stage of Dekia's Lantern at the designated spot, the specters will awaken to the dick and void. Bro, just say it's buffed. Okay. So this one is recommended 340 AP, recommended 3 or 420 DP. Okay, so before, like, listen, when this comes out, they better have a no crystal loss event for, like, the first two weeks of this. Or they should just make it permanent, to be honest. But, I mean, remember when Dekia Ash first came out? I made a video, and it's like, I had 8,000 plus health full buffed everything. Dude, I just, like, full to zero instant. And it was not great, so... Yeah, just be very skeptical of Ash Forest. Um, <laughs> right now it's okay because they nerfed it like three times. But, you know, when they decide they're going to come out with another version, be careful about that. So play your tag character first before you decide you want to lose crystals on your main. All right. Anyway, let's see. Main loot, Deborah and Necklace. If you already have pen, you could ignore this one. Uh, Forgotten Sign of Oblivion. I believe this one might be the token for the rings. Um, they're introducing new items called relics and like crystals. So it's going to be a like new item. I think I, I saw some screenshots of it, but they weren't in English. So I wasn't really too sure. But we'll talk about it again when it comes to the live servers and everything. Um, but anyway, the there's new crystals and everything. We're going to have to do a version 9 of our crystal update when that happens. And then I actually get my hands on them to play with it. But um, yeah, there's going to be new relics and then base new crystals essentially. So yeah, that's going to be changing. Going to add more Debarekas and everything. I, in theory, it should be a higher drop rate. I don't actually think 
you can get 340 with uh, Black Star Akudum. You might be able to get close, but you you basically have to have full pen everything. Like full pen Deborekas, including rings, and just straight AP, and you might be able to get 340. I assume this is going to be for... Like, whenever the Sovereign weapons come out, soon TM, it's going to be for that. Because I really don't think you can get 340 AP with a Black Star at the current state. Uh, you might be able to get close, but I don't think it is. And if you can, you're barely breaking the number. Because I think I'm at, like, three 330-something AP. And that's with uh, Tet, um, Tet Debereka rings. And that those are the only two things. Um... So, like, yeah, I'll just be very skeptical of this spot. Like, I'll wait for someone else to do it. I'll grind here on day one. I'll lose crystals for you so you guys can see what it's all about. Um, they're buffing Dekia Olens. It's a nice screenshot, actually. Okay, so we all know Olens, right? Olens is not really a thing where... Your gear score, like, obviously, you need high gear score, AP and DP. However, knowing the mechanics in group grind spots like Olin's is way more important. And also having the right party group. So, like, if you have a Shy, that's great. If you have a Striker or Zerker, chances are you'll be doing better. So, the hard truth is, knowing mechanics or group spots is a lot more valuable than AP. Obviously, you want to have more gear score. But yeah, um, ideally you're going to be wanting to run for the relics and everything. So that's awesome. Relics. Okay. This is in English. We get to read it live. Okay. So when they say relics, these are, do they mean like artifacts? If artifacts are the same, that's cool. So we have Kabua's artifacts, which is like the offensive side, right? This one gives health, DR, and endurance, which is, I think, like, stamina. Um, so, like, Ash Wars, where to get it at the new spots. Yeah, I think these are good. Like, these are just defensive. And then for all of you evasion players out there, evasion's dead at the moment, which is actually really sad. All evasion, health, and endurance. So, basically, the difference is all DR versus all evasion. 250 health is really nice, and so is I mean, stamina is whatever, kind of, to be honest. But yeah, I think people are going to want this for defensive. Um, If that is artifacts, then I don't think it replaces offensive. But if it's a completely new item, then, you know, DR is the way to go at the current time. Okay, so you can guarantee create them. 50 Earth Powder, 100 Dekia Fragments, and 1,000 Magical Lightstone Crystals. You guys probably have a bunch of these already. The new items we're going to get are the Dekia Fragments. And, um... Okay, so these are artifacts. Just by, like, looking at the picture, even if it's not in English, these are artifacts. Admittedly, I have no idea what... Uh, this is probably, like, the equivalent of Crystals... Bound cannot be repaired, price, weight, and how to like the effects, how to get it. <laughs> I've looked at BDO items enough in the eight years that I just know what the text is without even knowing what the text is. All right, so they added new crystals. Uh, this is interesting. Added four night or four types of magic crystals that can be obtained by grinding and through the second stage of Dekia. Okay, so the precise destruction. AP, more hit power, and crit. Um. So right now. I is that good? Like right now we can get AP. This probably seems better, just like all hit. Like I assume this means like hit as in Either accuracy, um, but also plus three to crit, assuming you aren't maxed out, which this is a little bit weird because you know how you have five crit 
bars, right? Like when you look at your stats, you should be maxed out when you're full buffed anyway. But the difference is, does it give more AP versus species? And um, is it better than like all out attack? And we'll see what happens. But right now, they, they look decent, but I don't know. We're going to have to wait to see. Um, this one is AP, DP, and CC resist. Uh, so I think this is a PvP crystal. Uh, AP, DR, and knockdown bound versus knock back and floating. So for all of you PvPers out there, we all know that knockdown is the strongest CC followed by uh, floats and and then... I guess it really depends. I think you should probably go for these because knockdown is actually really strong. Um, whereas if you get like knockback or bounds, whatever. Um, floating is kind of dangerous as well, but knockdown can like literally hard stuck you on the ground. So I think this is going to be the one that people are going for. Um, Crystal of Stubborn Patience. AP, all DR, st Stun, Stiffness, Freeze. This is a PVE uh, crystal. Whereas these two are PvP. So I think you should get them all. But they're all different uses. Um, I don't know. I think I'll probably go be going for this one for PvE. Defensive. And then obviously we'll try this one out for offensive. And then this one for PvP. The middle one. I don't really see too much of uh, use for this one. But I also don't put myself in weird situations like that. So anyway. I think they're all good for specific uses. Olin's where the spot is. I'll I'll try it out when it goes live. And all of these are just bug fixes and knowledge. So with that said, that's all the loot or not loot notes for today. Um, I was reading this one. I, was, I saw the word loot and I was like, okay. So anyway, that's the patch notes for this what week, and hopefully it should hit the live servers in a week or so. And um, yeah, pretty excited. Dark Knight changes. We get some new grind spots. Uh, admittedly, these grind spots are for end game players, which it is what it is. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for Land of the Morning Light 2 for the rest of everything. But yeah, we'll be trying all the new stuff out when it happens. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you come back. And we got a lot of guides to update in the future as well. So whether you're a new player, returning player, or someone who's just looking to get better at this game, that's what I like to make videos of, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Peace!